Take that opportunity to give her the, the opportunity to do that. And I will say that uh, Rachel and Tyronique, who's also graduated, they come back on Wednesdays and they're our helpers. So they, they are faithful about that and I really appreciate them and their service that they give to us as, as they have moved on. But I've asked Rachel to speak this morning. Rachel uh, was uh, a couple months ago when the uh, Christmas took place in uh, September. Kelly uh, Deer, uh, Bernito, uh, is, was the lay director on the girls' side. And uh, she was, we were talking about Rachel, and she asked Rachel to be on the team. And I don't think she was initially to do a talk, okay? But, you know, God has his own plan. And, uh, and Rachel was asked to do a talk, and she's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I can't do that. Uh, I'm like, Rachel, you can do this. I said, you can do this. And, uh, and she did, and she did a fantastic job. Uh, and, and then I asked Rachel, <laughs> I said, Rachel, for you Sunday, would you be willing to do? I want you, I want, I, again, I volunteered Rachel. I said, Rachel, I want you to speak for her. No, 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 I can't do that. It's fun, you know. And, uh, but she willingly did say yes, eventually after I trusted her on. So, but I want to, I want to let you know I'm proud of you for what you're doing. And Rachel's going to speak today. This talk that she's going to speak is the talk she gave on the chrysalis. And it's one of the hard, kind of one of the hardest talks to actually give because it's one where at the very beginning of the chrysalis for the youth, and not much is mentioned about God in this talk and so, and things like that. So it's, it's a, it's a talk called Ideals and I'll turn it someone if you just that was just yeah it wasn't that's not what you want to do for young people especially when they're learning about new stuff like well how do I how do I know that what you're saying is right like first of all you can't just throw God in their face you have to let them come to you and then learn about it later um yeah but I'll start off with a question how many of you think you will go to the Olympics in 2020? Yes, I love that confidence. Yes, all right. Um, well, I can tell you with absolute certainty that I will not. Um, of course, none of us will actually go to the Olympics if we don't believe it. Um, so in the Olympics, every athlete has a beginning where they're just starting to learn whatever they do. And in so many interviews and cases, you see um, after they've won a medal or something, you hear about how there was someone before them that inspired them so much that they said, I wanna be like them. I wanna go to the Olympics and do what they do. And that idea of one day going to the Olympics, representing an entire nation, and maybe winning, becomes their whole life. The planning and preparation for years and years, and they do everything in their power to reach that ideal. Uh, I have memories of when I was younger, even though I'm still young, but when I was really young. Um, when I idealized uh, my older sister. She was my Olympian, so I say. Um, she is eight years older than I am, and she would constantly be doing something so awesome, and I had to do it too. I'm sure some of y'all can relate, whether you're the younger sibling or the older. <laughs> um, the styles like she wore, I wanted to wear too. Um, the amount of times I tried to loop her closet <laughs> when they were um, in the other room and, you know, find the smallest item of clothing she owned, and then I would just pretend it was mine. Uh, because it's, it's not obvious that an eight-year-old is wearing 16-year-old's clothing. Um, or when I tried to pull off her sparkly silver or blue eyeshadow straight out of 2007, and 
and I thought they wouldn't notice. Um, yeah, too, too many times. But uh, when I was asked to do this the first time, uh, to be honest, I wasn't sure how or even if I could. And then Jimmy asked me to do it again. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, I've always been more of a shy person, and public speaking isn't really my strong suit. Even if it looks like I'm confident, it's not. I'm going to do it. Um, but I thought all about the, the Chrysalis talks that I've heard when I first went, um, and the ones after that, and how much they impacted um, me the first time I heard them, and how important they were for the weekend, and how important they were for the people that heard them. And in that moment, those memories became my ideal for this talk. So, what is an ideal? Um, there are a few definitions out there floating around your head, I'm sure. Um, a couple are, an ideal is an image of who you would like to become. And maybe it's an athlete, or a sister, or a friend, or maybe someone you see on TV, or even the media. Um, another definition could be, an ideal can also be a goal you want to move towards, a priority, an aim you work towards, or something of leading importance in your life. These two points are examples of what an ideal can be in your life, a generalized definition of what we believe to be an ideal. Um, the first thing that I thought of when hearing those definitions is school, um, mostly for kids, you know, five to 22, I guess, but um, maybe the workplace for the wiser folk out there. Um, in school, you have all kinds of goals and ideals, like finishing a long-term project early, or um, doing the best on your assignments, um, living up to the expectations of someone who is successful. Or maybe your ideals are a little less academic. Um, they were for me because I'm a nerd, but... Um, like seeing qualities in others that you'd like for yourself. I know these ideals firsthand. My whole life, school has something, has been something I strive to be successful at. Um, granted, procrastination fights for that number one spot, um, but I would be spending countless hours on an assignment for that perfect grade. And a lot of the times I didn't do everything I wanted to because I was so busy with social media. Oh, no, I mean, um, homework. That was supposed to be homework. Um, I was busy with homework. And that caused a bunch of stress and anxiety that I have to deal with. That pressure to be at the top um, comes from the ideals we hold. Now, I'm not saying give up on school. Stay in school, kids. It's amazing. Um, it's good to have something to strive for. Um, but there is a point where it can be unhealthy. After four years of high school, I learned to recognize my ideals, finally, and try to manage them. Um, and as I start college, or started college at this point, uh, I'm going to have to learn again. But I know that there's always people out there that can help. Now there's one more definition of ideal that I'd like to share with you. Um, I came across this particular one because my very first instinct uh, when asked to give the ideals talk was, what is the real definition of the word ideals? AKA, what does Google say? Because, you know, Google always has the answers. Um, as an adjective, ideal means satisfying one's conception of what is perfect, most suitable, 
supreme, excellent, flawless, exemplary, picture perfect, you get the idea. Um, suddenly the word ideal carries a lot of weight. Of course, we all have generalized ideals, ideals that the world has shown us we should have. Ideals that if we work towards them, we will be perfect. Like to be successful, or wealthy, or pretty, just to name a few. Um, but as human beings, we are anything but perfect. We are all unique in our own way. The fact that we, as a society, have an ideal for beauty and looks in general, is like saying there's an ideal fiber in the world's largest fuzzy blanket. It's impossible. Yeah. But I want y'all to know that the future of your life is shaped by clarifying your ideals. Our ability to determine ideals, our ability to determine how we will live our life is one of the things that sets us apart from the rest of creation. Ideals belong to humans. Rocks and plants don't have heroes they look up to, and insects and animals don't plan for the future by setting aside a college fund or retirement plan, um, or shop for new clothes so they'll look the best on the first day of school. They operate by instinct. As human beings, we can determine our future. We shape our lives according to the values we choose, whether we know it or not. And we have the freedom to set long-term goals and priorities for ourselves. Maybe the word ideal reminds you of someone or something you idolize that is really admire and want to be like. When I was really young, my schooling had become somewhat of an idol for me and stayed for a long time, particularly in like elementary grade school, when I felt like I had no real friends or social life whatsoever. I knew at least I was smarter than most of those other kids. Since I was pretty shy and a good kid, I didn't really talk in class. I hardly ever misbehaved in school because I didn't want to be wrong. I had to be, had to do the right thing because anything else would cause the sky to fall. Like that Chicken Little movie. Um, that ideal followed, allowed academics to rule my life. Later on, I had idols all around me. Anyone who was well-liked, smart, or prettier than me, had more expensive things than me, that's who I wanted to be like. If I had clothes that didn't look quite like what I saw on other people, you must believe I did not wear those clothes. Because of me putting too much value on other people and their opinions, and other people's lifestyles. I had so many unnecessary arguments with my mom. Um, when all she wanted was to give me the best she could, along with academics, fitting in was an idol in my life. Years later, in middle school and in high school, um, and also when I came here, I met a bunch of wonderful, um, supporting, weird and smart friends, and they kind of helped me realize that I was, you know, all right, being smart, unique, and weird in myself. Uh, because they were like that too, for sure. Um, by seventh grade, my friends had become my idols. I pushed myself to be as smart as them, as cool as them, or just part of the group in general. They were my standard. And y'all might be thinking, idols are not the same thing as ideals. I mean, you know, commandment two, y'all. Hello. Um, but what we ideal, no, sorry. What we idolize is represented 
by the ideal we are moving towards. Yes. An ideal is something you aim for, something that motivates you, gives your life purpose, direction, and meaning, something to which you give yourself, your time, your energy, your money, and your action, something you sacrifice for. We need to reflect on our ideals to make sure we are aiming our lives at the best goals. Some ideals we have are positive, but some may be negative. Some ideals will give us a direction to go towards, it may give us a thrill in the short run. Um, an example would be if you were to spin around in a, for a pinata to hit, and then your goal is that pinata, that's like the goal, the perfect thing. And then you kind of walk in there and you're like, oh, and you miss and you, you know, fall off the stage or something. Um, you may think that you're going in the right direction towards that pinata, but you, you miss. Clearly you miss, you're on, on the floor, you know. Um, in the long run, the ideal may be putting us in the complete opposite direction of where we need to go, and that will hurt us and our future possibilities. Let's say your ideal is to be one of the smartest kids in class, or just in general, and you, you want to get a perfect score, get a perfect evaluation, uh, and then during a hard test, you're thinking to yourself, I don't know what to do, I don't know the answer, I have to get this perfect score, what am I going to do? Yeah, but if I'm careful, no one will see me side-eye that text next to me. I'll be fine, you know. Uh, trust me, everyone has cheated or copied at least once in their life. Um, maybe you have a more positive ideal in mind. Um, maybe you want to win a team award, or just award, um, at the end of your season or win a championship. So for your short-term ideal, you try super hard to be the best player you can be, and you win. And for the time being, that's amazing. It's a huge accomplishment. Um, that one small ideal can provide a sense of purpose for that time. But what happens after? You might be lost, trying to find a new ideal, and a new ideal after that, and then a new ideal after that. We all want to have a goal, a priority, an aim you work towards, and to have a positive long-term ideal so that we don't have to keep finding new ideals. We want one that's big enough for every single one of us. So what's your ideal? What is your vision for your life? Unless you really know your ideal, then someone or something is determining it for you. Without a positive ideal to aim toward, our lives become aimless. As our minds are filled with ideals of the world that may be good enough, we find that it's only temporary. The responsibility of choosing whom we want to be like and what do we what we want to become is ours. As you determine your ideal, you are determining the direction of the rest of your life. And I'll finish with this quote. The vision that you glorify in your mind, the ideal that you enthrone in your heart, this you will build your life by, and this you will become. <laughs>